Welcome to Module 3, Lesson 13, where we will be talking about inequalities. Okay, inequalities, um, they are statements um, that say that one expression is less than or equal to or greater than or equal to <clears throat> another expression. Okay, such as if we wrote something that looked like this, 2x plus 3 is less than 5. Okay, that's an inequality. So what we're doing now is we are, we are just substituting the equal sign, which would have gone here. And we, at one point we might have put, in, put um, 2x plus 3 um, equals 5. Okay, 2x plus 3 equals 5. We could solve for x there. Um, now we are, um, we are using this to, um, with an, um, a less than sign right here. Okay, so inequalities are very special, and um, they are something that you will see uh, quite a bit in the future. And um, we will take it um, little baby steps to um, reach some understanding of um, how we go ahead and solve these. Okay, so here we go. Okay, well this first, uh, this opening exercise here, writing inequality statements, this will warm us up a little bit. We won't be um, using any variables here, but um, we, will be, um, we will be expressing um, all of these, not right away, but we'll, we'll be expressing them ultimately um, as, a, um, as an inequality. Okay, so right now it just says Tariq is trying to save $265 to buy a new tablet. $265.49 to be specific. So right now he has $40 and can save $38 a week from his allowance. Okay, so for all these different week periods here, we are going to um, write and evaluate an expression to represent the money saved after that period of time. Okay, so let's go, let's go ahead and do, and do this together. Um, I can just start it, send you away, um, and then have you come back to get the answers, and we'll uh, save some time. Okay, so as you can see, it's, uh, we're always going to have 40 here, okay, because he has his $40, all right, right now. It means that's going to have, it's not going to change, okay, but he can save $38 a week. So in this case, after two weeks, he would have saved 38 times 2, okay. And so then if we just go ahead and evaluate, then we have 48 plus 76, and that eventually equals 116, okay? So after two weeks, um, it evaluates out to $116, okay? So um, I'll do one more and then um, let you go ahead and do, um, do the rest up to eight weeks um, by yourself and come back and check in, okay? So again, three weeks. 40 is not going to change, all right? But plus 38 now times 3, all right? And so 40 and then 38 times 3 is 114, okay? And so that equals 158. Is that right? 158, 154, sorry. $154. Okay, so here we go. After three weeks, $154, all right? So go ahead and do uh, four, five, well actually we've done this one already. So four, five, six, seven, and eight weeks and then come on back and we'll answer those other two problems together. Okay, so um, we already knew this one here. We already solved for three weeks, 154, four weeks. It's gonna be 192. And of course you can see what's happening is we're just pretty much adding for each particular week, we're just adding another $38 as we gain another week in time. Okay, so you can see those there. Um, I'm going to check those with your answers. I'm just watching your, of course, watching your multiplication. Okay, so there we go. But the big question here now, here now is, um, is this question right here, um, these next two, um, next two questions. Um, when will Tariq have enough money to buy the tablet. Okay, we need to go back, of course, and take a look. He needs, 
$265.49 to buy the tablet. So at what point can he finally buy the tablet? And if you look closely, you can see it starts from right here, okay, $268, um, because $268 We'll cover it because he needs two hundred and sixty-five dollars and forty-nine cents. So from that point on, he can um, he can he can afford it. So from w week week six and on. Okay, so that's when he will have enough money to buy the tablet. Now um, let's just go ahead and um, <clears throat> so I want to see what you can do here. We can take write an inequality that will generalize the problem, okay? It will generalize the problem. So go ahead and see what you can do with that. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna write an inequality kind of like we would write equations, except you're going to use the um, greater than or equal to sign instead of um, <clears throat> an equal sign. So go ahead and try, see what you can do with this and come on back if you, um, of course, if you, you can't get it, just, um, just wait for me to uh, start talking again. Okay, so you may have had some some difficulty, but hopefully um, <clears throat> after I explain this to you, you will understand. So the idea is here, we wanted to find out when Tariq, um, how many weeks would have to go by before he could buy this tablet for $265.49. We were told how much he needed. We were told what he had now at this point, and we were told his weekly um, savings from his allowance that he could uh, put aside, okay? So if we take all of those things, we can come up with this here. Because um, 38 is the variable, because 38 times the number of weeks, okay? Because that's $38 per week. Plugging in a week here, number of weeks, where the W is would um, would be what we could solve for because we want to know how long it will take for him to have enough to buy this tablet. The 40 stands on its own as a constant because it is um, it's there. It's a one time a one time um, amount of money, and of course on this side of the equation, um, in this case, of course, an inequality is the 265 dollars and 49 cents because that's our target. Okay. And you can see in the middle now, what we have here, this sign, means greater than or equal to. So this, when solved for, needs to be greater than or equal to this. And then we will know that's when, um, now we're solving for, you know, we did it this way here, and we were able to get, of course, get the answer, okay? But over here now, we are trying to create an equation, or in this Again, this sense is called an inequality, okay, inequality, because we're talking about something that's either greater than or equal to. Um, um, we are using an inequality to go ahead and solve. So now with an inequality, one of the special um, properties of an inequality is that there can be um, more than one solution, okay, more than one solution. Because as you see, when we did this, we know at six weeks, um, he'll have enough, and then at seven weeks, he'll have enough, eight weeks, he'll have enough more, okay, both of those, all right? So there are several solutions here, but we can also look at the, the actual inequality itself and solve for it just like we would solve for any, any equation, okay, any equation. We're just keeping in mind this symbol. is no longer equals, but in this case, it's greater greater than or equal to, okay, because that little line underneath there means and equal to, greater than or equal to, greater than or equal to, okay? So just go ahead and solve. What we'll do is we'll just kind of take away that 40 from both sides, okay? And 38W is greater than or equal to $225.49, okay? And again, now we're going to um, multiply, of course, by the reciprocal. Okay, we know that's going to be W here. Again, greater than or equal to. And now if we take um, 225 
0.49. Okay, we multiply that by the reciprocal. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I actually used my, my calculator for this because of uh, the strange number we had right here. Okay, I've got this answer here. So W is greater than or equal to 5.9, and this would be, in this case, would be 5.9 weeks. Okay, because this is the W stands for. Okay, so 5.9 weeks. Now, anything that is greater than 5.9 weeks um, works or equal to. Okay, could also be equal to. All right, so 5.9 is correct, will work if we plug that in. Uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10.4, etc., etc. Okay, so this um, example one here, evaluating inequalities, finding a solution, um, it asks you um, to go ahead and um, write. Um, several true numerical inequality expressions, okay, several of those to, um, that would satisfy this uh, statement here, which is the sum of two consecutive odd integers is more than negative 12, okay? So I could start you on two, three, four, let's do about five of them. How's that? So I could go now, again, two be, always be careful now. Two consecutive odd integers. We're talking about consecutive numbers, of course. We know the numbers that come right next to each other. But in this case, we have two consecutive odd integers. Okay, so for example, 5 and 7. So, But 5 plus 7, because that's the sum of two consecutive odd integers, is more than negative 12. So the more than sign, make it look a little better than that, more than, okay, negative 12. And this is a true numerical inequality because I know that 5 plus 7 is 12 and that is greater than negative 12. Okay, I can find another <clears throat> few consecutive odd numbers. I could do 3 plus 5. Okay, is uh, greater than negative 12. So I know that's 8 and that is true. It's greater than negative 12. Um, could do another one. How about 1 plus 3 is greater than negative 12. And of course, 4 is greater than negative 12. Um, and again, we know all these are, are correct because we're using positive, uh, two consecutive positive odd integers. And they are, of course, going to be greater than a, a negative integer. Okay, but now we can have two, how about even two negatives? We can do negative 3 plus negative 1, okay, is greater than negative 12. And that's negative 4 is greater than negative 12. We could even do um, uh, negative 1 plus 1 is greater than negative 12, and that's 0. 0 is greater than negative 12. Yeah, okay, so these are just a few. If you have some others that you, you might, um, might want to add in there, you can go ahead and add, add in there as well. But you can see, I mean, there's a possibility. I mean, you could write... A false numerical inequality expression, like we could put um, um, negative 7, and how about negative 9 and negative 7 greater than negative 12? Ooh, that doesn't work because that's negative 16 and it is not greater than negative 12, so that would be um, <clears throat> incorrect. Okay, so you can't throw any willy nilly consecutive odd integers in there because they're not all going to work. Okay. Okay, so the next one um, <clears throat> says the sum of two consecutive odd integers is more than negative 12, all right? What is the smallest value that will make this true, okay? What is the smallest value that will make this true, okay? So you're going to write an inequality that can be used to find the smallest value, okay, so you're right now have to write an inequality um, that can be used to find the smallest value that will make this statement true. So see if we can um, we can figure figure this this one out, okay?
Okay, so this was uh, probably quite quite challenging, and hope, I'm, I'm pretty sure you, you came right back to this, and that's fine, okay? Um, we actually did something like this in class um, on um, today, which this is Monday, the 5th of January, 2015, and uh, we did something in class when we created a, an equation in class. Um, it wasn't an inequality, but it was an equation because we were finding equal statements, um, <clears throat> where we talked about consecutive integers. And we talked about, like, if uh, the first integer was x, then the consecutive integer of the one after would be x plus 1. Now, this is not going to work in this case because um, we, have, um, we have x as an integer, okay, an integer, but the first odd integer is going to be 2x plus 1, okay, 2x plus 1, because, um, you know, 1 is a special number, um, we know uh, 2 is our first even integer, okay, our first even integer, so that would be, that would be this, because we plugged in 1 here, that would be 2 times 1, which is 2, plus 1, and that would be 3. So our first odd integer in that case is, um, is 3. Okay? So let's just go ahead and do that again. So if we were going to, again, put these words into, um, <clears throat> and into variables, uh, numbers and variables, coefficients and variables, we would um, have something that looked like this. So 2x plus 1 that would be the first odd integer, okay? And then we would, um, we would want to add on the next, so we could actually even do this, I like that, okay? Plus 2x plus 3, which is the next odd integer, okay? The next odd integer. Um, and I think you hope you hopefully you can see that because if I just plug in a number, if I plug in one for x, you know this would um, <clears throat> this would be three, and then this would be five. And we can see that is the these are two consecutive odd integers. Okay, right there. So so now we have our first odd integer right here, our next consecutive odd integer that plus that has to be greater than negative 12, okay? So we've created, and if we just go ahead, and um, I know many of you know, let's go ahead and add our like expressions, combining like expressions. So we have 2x plus 2x, positive 2x, positive 2x, that equals 4x, and then 1 plus 3 plus 4 is greater than negative 12, okay? So here's what we can um, here's what we can work with right here. So let's go ahead and we can actually solve using um, this inequality um, right here. Okay. So if we go ahead and do it, um, hopefully you guys are getting better and better at this and uh, more and more natural. When you see something like this, this should not frighten you. This should just tell you, whoop! I know what to do. It's back to basics. Okay, right here. Go ahead and of course we take that one number and let's get rid of that. We're trying to make zero. And how do we make zero there? We negative four. We do the same thing on this side, negative four. So now we have four x, that's this right here, is greater than negative sixteen. Okay? Four x is greater than negative sixteen because we've combined these because we did the same over here. Okay? And then if we solve, of course we know we do, we multiply by the reciprocal. Hopefully this is getting to be real natural with you. And of course, if we multiply 4x by 1 fourth, we get x. And then if we multiply negative 16 by 1 fourth, we get negative 4. Okay, negative 4. So the solution here is x is greater than negative 4. Okay, x is greater than negative 4. So x has to be greater than negative 4. So, is negative 4 a solution? In this case, 
with this solution, x is greater than negative 4, is negative 4, will negative 4 work in our original equation, or in our equation? Let's go ahead and check it out, okay? Okay, so our solution was this, x is greater than negative 4, and we're trying to figure out if negative 4 actually works it works as a solution to this. So what we do is we plug in, of course, our negative 4 for our x here. So 4, let me just move that down there, 4 times, um, 4 times negative 4 is negative 16, plus 4, is that greater than negative 12? And if we go ahead and finish that up here, we know that negative 16 plus 4 is actually negative 12, but that does not work because negative 12 is not greater than negative 12. It is equal to. The only way that could be correct is if we were looking for something that was greater than or equal to negative 4, but that is not the case. Okay, so negative 4 is not a solution. Okay, um, is negative 5 a solution? And if we look at our solution here of x is greater than negative 4, is negative 5 greater than negative 4? It's not. Okay, therefore negative 5 is not a solution. Is negative 3 a solution? Negative 3, is it greater than negative 4? It is. And so negative 3 is indeed a solution. And we could always prove it, of course, prove all of these by plugging them in. Okay, and if we look at it here, we can go ahead and um, <clears throat> plug in negative 3. So um, this is negative 12 plus 4, which is actually negative 8. And negative 8 is indeed greater than negative 12. Okay, so anything x, anything that is greater than negative 4 will be a solution to this problem. And there are many, many, therefore there are many, many solutions. Okay, so um, <clears throat> here's a question before we move on to our, uh, to our exercises here, exercise 1. Um, how is solving an equation similar to solving an inequality? And uh, hopefully um, you have uh, come to see that they are similar in the fact that we use the same sequence of steps. Okay, the same sequence of steps. And those steps would be to um, um, make a zero by getting rid of the, um, getting rid of the number value on the left side. Um, solving and um, um, for one of the variable by multiplying by its reciprocal on both sides. Exactly the same. The only thing that's different, um, that they're different here, is that an equation, okay, an equation yields one answer. One answer only. Okay, one answer only. It's like x equals 4. That's it. Okay, x equals 4. With an inequality, an inequality yields infinite answers. Okay, infinite answers. Infinite answers. Okay. Because we went back here, <clears throat> x is greater than negative 4. Every number that's greater than negative 4 solves this inequality. And we have no end to numbers, truly. Um, so we would move right on that number line, and we would continue and continue and continue. Okay? You know, there will be cases at some point where um, our, you know, our, our, Yield will not be infinite, um, but it would be uh, multiple still. But in, for, our, for our purposes now, 
um, equations and inequalities are similar because they are they use the same sequence of steps. They're different in that equations yield one answer, inequalities yield infinite answers. Okay, so I'm going to have um, I'll go ahead and start. I'll read these exercises to you, and then um, we'll have you. I'll have you do them one at a time. Okay, and come on back and. Uh, and check your answer with mine. <clears throat> so Connor went to the county fair with $22.50 in his pocket. He bought a hot dog and a drink for $3.75 and then wanted to spend the rest of his money on ride tickets, which cost $1.25 each. Write an inequality to represent the total spent where R is the number of tickets purchased. Okay, So you're going to write an inequality to represent the total spent where R is the number of tickets purchased. Okay, So go ahead and use all of this information and um, create an inequality. Again, look a lot like an equation except you'll have um, an inequality statement in the middle of it instead of an equal sign. So give that a whirl and uh, come on back. Okay, so hopefully this came uh, pretty quickly to you, pretty naturally to you. Um, again, I like to have my variable first, my variable expression first, which is 1.25R, because, and that comes from, of course, from the fact that tickets are $1.25 each, and we are using R to represent the number of tickets purchased. Okay, so 125R because that is our, our unknown, our variable, plus 375, and that 375 comes here because he, um, he bought already, bought a hot dog and a drink for 375, okay? Now all of that, this here, needs to be less than or equal to 2250 because that's what he has in his pocket and no more, okay? I'm not talking about him borrowing money from anyone. That's what he has. So the hot dog and drink for $3.75 plus the tickets he buys, whatever number that is, okay, all of that total, that needs to equal less than, or it needs to be less than or equal to $22.50. Okay? And that's our expression right there. That's what's called our inequality. Okay, inequality. All right, now with B, part B here, um, it says Connor wants to use this inequality to determine if he can purchase 10 tickets. All right, use substitution, which I have been calling plugging in, to show whether he will have enough money. Okay, so go ahead and substitute 10 for R, and um, do your work and come on back and uh, let's see if you're right. So it'll be a, an answer will be either yes, he will have enough, or no, he will not. Okay, so I did all my work for B. I did it up here in this space I had, not much space down there to work in. So I went ahead and um, you know rewrote my, um, my original um, inequality, okay, which I came came up with over here. All right, and then I just went ahead and substituted or plugged in the 10 wherever I had my R. And if I multiplied uh, 1.25 times 10, I had 1250. 375 stays the same. Add those two together, 1625. And my, my final statement here is 1625, $16.25 is less than or equal to 2250. That is a true statement. Therefore, that would be true. Put a check by it. And uh, yes, he will have enough money um, since purchasing 10 tickets along with the uh, hot dog and the soda would only cost him $16.25, okay? Okay, and now um, we want to know what is the total maximum number of tickets he can buy based on the given information, okay? So based on all that information, and what this just means is that you're going to go ahead and use your, 
use your original inequality to um, come up with the maximum number of tickets he can buy um, based on the given information, which is the information at the front of the problem. Okay, so go ahead and try to solve that and um, come on back. Okay, so we solved here for the um, total maximum number of tickets he can buy. And um, again, started with my original inequality, okay, that I came up with, that we came up with, uh, actually in part, uh, part A, okay. And went ahead and followed the sequence of steps, the same sequence of steps I always follow. We always follow um, for any equation. Um, again, making zero by getting rid of the... Um, of the number on the the value on the left side to isolate the um, the R. So we have now we have after uh, subtracting away a 375 from both sides, we have 1.25 R is less than or equal to $18.75. And of course, to make one or make one R, we um, just multiply the the 1.25 by its reciprocal. Okay, and we get R. And we have to do the same to the other side. So if we um, go ahead and multiply 1875 by 1 over 125, we could do a little, and what you want to do is a little division here, a little cross cancellation. And if you went ahead and divided 1875 by 1 1.25, you would come up with 15. Okay, therefore R is less than or equal to 15. Very important. With this statement, I can ask you a question. Is 15 a solution? What do you think? Yes or no based on this right here. R is less than or equal to 15. Yes, 15 would work. Okay, Because 15 is a solution because we have the or equal to. Okay, We of course can prove it if we... Um, if we went ahead and did our 1.25, and if we multiplied that by 15, and added $3.75, okay, if we did this, we can go ahead and solve, and we know that that plus 15 is $18.75 plus 375, actually equals 22.50 even, okay? And it does work, because that's what we wanted to make sure, that it was either less than or equal to. Yeah, in this case, with this um, or equal to part of uh, the inequality, 15 does work. Okay? Will 16 work? Well, 16 will not work. Okay? 16 will not work because um, it is not less than or equal to 15. It's more than 15, so that will not work. But any number less than 15 of course, will work. 14, yes. 13, yes. In this case, they're not infinite because you can't buy um, an infinite, you can't buy negative one tickets, okay, all the way down to one ticket. So anything from one up to 15 um, will, will work, okay? All right, so here's our last, um, last exercise um, of this lesson 13. Um, it asks us to write and solve an inequality statement to represent the following problem. On a particular airline, check bags can weigh no more than 50 pounds. No more than 50 pounds. Okay, I'm going to underline that no more than. Sally packed 32 pounds of clothes and five identical gifts in a suitcase that weighs, that weigh eight pounds, okay? Write an inequality to represent this situation, okay? So again, she's packed 32 pounds of clothes, five identical gifts, and the suitcase itself, we have to keep that in mind, weighs eight pounds, okay? So keep all of this in mind when you write your inequality, okay? And let me just give you a little bit of a hint. Let's just say x equals the weight of one gift. 
Okay, so go ahead and um, take your time. Come on back. Write an inequality. If you need any help, please feel free to go back and look at the things we've done in the past. Okay, again, hopefully um, this has come a little bit more, coming a little bit more naturally to you as we move along here. And uh, yeah, so the way we look at it here, again, having my variable first, 5x is going to represent, um, you know, the five, this here, the five identical gifts, okay? So that's our variable because they do weigh something. We have um, the eight pounds that the uh, suitcase weighs already. And then we have the 32 pounds of clothing that she already has in it, all right? All of that needs to be, of course, less than or equal to 50 pounds, okay? Um, <clears throat> we fly, I don't know many of you, how many of you have flown quite a bit. I've flown quite a bit myself with my family. And um, you, know, you go over those limits and they, you can be charged a lot of money. So really, really good to, to pay attention to these limits. Um, but yeah, that's our inequality. Okay, that is our inequality. Again, we can make this more specific by um, um, by combining like terms. Of course, we can do 5x plus 40. Okay, because we've combined 8 and 32. It need to be less than or equal to 50. Okay, so my next question is this. Final question um, is uh, what is the um, the greatest possible weight um, that a gift can, can be, one of these gifts can be. Each gift can be a certain weight to make, um, make this statement true. So go ahead and continue and solve this inequality. Come on back and we'll check it. Okay, so here we go. Um, we, um, we started here, okay, because we started right here because we just um, made a little bit more. We combined those like terms, 8 and 32. So, of course, I'm going to um, subtract away my number, trying to isolate that 5x. So, subtract 40 from both sides. And I'm left with 5x is less than or equal to 10. Now, I'm multiplying by the reciprocal of 5, and that's 1 fifth. 1 fifth times the 5x is going to give us a single x, which is always the case. And um, is less than or equal to, and then 1 fifth of 10 is, of course, Two, okay. So, what this statement says, this I this x in x is less than or equal to two. That means that each of those gifts can be two pounds or less. Can't be any more than two pounds. Any more than two pounds, and um, and we're going over. Okay, going over fifty pounds total. And we could even check that right here. So let's say 5x plus 40. I'm taking this uh, inequality um, from here and just using that one. And if we go ahead and substitute or plug in 3, for example, okay, plus 40. And so 5, that's 15, plus 40 is 55. And 55 is not less than or equal to 50. Okay, that does not work. So, of course, 3 pounds isn't going to work. 2.5 pounds is not going to work. 2.09 pounds is not going to work, okay, because they can get very, very particular. Um, but anything that is less than or equal to 2 pounds will indeed work. Okay, and in closing this lesson, just to go over this again, um, this idea of, of what is similar and different about um, inequalities and equation equations? Just this page again. Um, similar again, we use the same sequence of steps. Okay, it is exactly the same. Do not let this confuse you. Okay, because um, if you can master solving equations, you can equally master solving inequalities. Okay, so we use the same sequence of steps. How is it different? Um, an equation yields one answer, okay? And inequality yields um, infinite answers, okay? And like I said, it's, well, I guess they are infinite in theory, um, but like we talked about with, um, with numbers of tickets and the one problem, you can't have negative tickets, okay? So it is finite. Um, there is an end to the possibilities, okay? But inequalities 
have um, very rarely, or actually never, have exactly one solution, okay? Um, the solutions will be uh, uh, more, than, more than that, and in many cases, you'll find out they are indeed infinite, infinite solutions, okay? All right, so go ahead and um, complete your exit ticket for Lesson 13 along with your problem set. And um, I'll see you in uh, Lesson 14.